Today I'm going to talk about the Fuji X100 that was released 13 years ago. If you're watching this particular video, you're probably in a similar situation that I was in. You want the X100V. We all do. But you don't want to pay inflated scalper prices or be placed on a month-long wait list. During the past year, the X100V has gained a ton of popularity through TikTok and influencer culture. And quite honestly, I'm fully on board with the hype. It's a really cool camera. It produces really neat images straight out of camera and it's just super compact and a really, really beautiful camera. So this has resulted in that camera basically being out of stock everywhere. And you might say, Tom, why don't you just pre-order the camera? And to that I say no. I, I'm the type of person that when I want a, a particular product, when I'm gonna make a significant investment on a piece of gear, I, I want it quick. I feel like Amazon has jaded me, but I don't want to be placed on a wait list and I'm impatient. So that had me searching Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, all over hoping that I would find one in stock and it just wasn't happening. So instead, I gambled on this X100 that popped up locally on Facebook Marketplace. I paid about 350 Canadian for it. Some of you might think that that price is a little bit high. It's an old camera, I get it. However, I wanted something small, cheap, fun to use to take with me on a trip and this one was available. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I do like about this camera and the things that I don't. So starting off with what I like about this camera is the image quality. Now this camera here only has a 12 megapixel sensor, which for some of you and some particular use cases might not be enough, but for me, for what I'm using it for, 12 megapixels is more than enough. I'm using this camera to just kind of document everyday life, for street photography, for my travels, and just for posting stuff on social media. And honestly, well edited 12 megapixel photos look wonderful on phones. Another thing that I love about this camera is the size of it. Now, I own a bunch of different Sony bodies. I'm recording this on an FX3. I have an A9 II, I have an A7S III, and also two A7 III's. A ton of cameras. And none of those will fit in my pocket. Even with the mist filter and one or two step up rings that I have on it, it still slides into my jacket pocket. I can hang it around my neck. It, it's not heavy at all. And I love that about this camera. The next thing to touch on is the rangefinder. Now, there's just something special about using a rangefinder camera that you really have to try for yourself to truly understand. You're also able to switch from the bare bones kind of glass rangefinder viewfinder to a digital overlay through using this switch right here. So essentially when you're looking at your image, you're looking through the bare bones um, rangefinder viewfinder. If you're kind of worried about your composition or you just want to double check, you can quickly switch that. It'll turn on the digital overlay and then you can click it again to turn it off and snap your photo. Another thing I love about it is the fixed lens. So the X100 has a fixed 23 millimeter or 35 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. It's f2, which is a great all-around focal length. Something to touch on with this camera specifically, being that it's only 12 megapixels and it is a fixed lens, so you have to be very cognizant of your composition. I know that when I'm taking a photo, that in post, in Lightroom, wherever I'm editing the photo, that I don't have a ton of wiggle room to crop in. So it makes me a little bit more thoughtful in the process of taking images, making sure that my composition is exactly how I want it, so I'm not trimming off all of those much needed megapixels when I'm editing. Lastly, just the aesthetic and build quality of the camera. Like, this thing is beautiful. It's solid aluminum, it feels really great in the hands, and it's just a beautiful little camera. So after shooting with this camera for a couple days, these are some of the things that I don't like about the camera. Now, being that this camera is 13 years old, the tech is outdated, the tech is old, and the camera is slow. From autofocus to previewing images, it's not even close to any of my newer bodies, and I didn't expect it to be. In order to make this camera work for me, I set the focusing area to center, I switch it to manual focus, and then I have the AEL back button set to my autofocus mode. Because it doesn't have a touch screen or anything like that, and you're kind of stuck with one particular focus area, and it's a little bit difficult to move that around, I will keep it set to center, I will go to take my image. If I want something in focus that might be in like the corner, the, like the left side or the right side of my image, I'll simply turn the camera using that center focus area, hit the focus button, lock on that, and then turn my camera back and recompose. One thing that might disappoint some people and which may make this camera not the right choice for you is the lack of film recipes. If you love the X100V and the straight out of camera looks that are offered from that camera, 
This does offer a couple film simulations, but it's nowhere near as customizable as the X100B. For me, I'm still okay with that. I usually take my images from my SD card, throw them right into my iPad or my computer, and then onto Lightroom Mobile, and from there I'll just add a couple little tweaks, add a little bit of grain, change the color to my preferences, and you can get very similar looks to that of the newer X100 series using a camera like this, or any camera for that matter. I guess my one takeaway to this video is to just consider older technology. I for one have been pretty caught up in like the hunt for the X100V. Like I said before, always scouring the internet, looking for places that had it in stock, Facebook, Kijiji, you name it. I had very low expectations for this camera and I'm very happy that I took a very small gamble picking it up because the images that come out of this are perfect. It's exactly what I need. and. Overall, I love this little camera. So if you're like me, you're just looking for something fun, cheap, lightweight to take some great images with, consider the older X100 models. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like this content, consider hitting that sub button. See ya.